What's up, internet? My name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, we're gonna talk about the new Canon EOS RP. So hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Kyle. Um, we make videos about uh, cameras, tech, and all that good stuff, like I already said. So Canon has announced the EOS RP, which is their entry level, full frame, mirrorless camera. Pretty exciting. I will put some links in the description. Uh, what I like to use is DP Review, the side-by-side -side comparison for comparing cameras. You can pick multiple cameras. Uh, right now I have four on the screen. I'm comparing the EOS RP, Canon 60 Mark II, Sony a7 III, and the EOS R. And I'm just, I got all the specs right next to each other. We're not gonna talk about all of these cameras in the video, but something like this is a great tool to help you choose which camera you wanna buy next. Okay, so you may have seen a bunch of videos about the Canon EOS RP already. A bunch of YouTubers, you know, photographers, cinematographers have made videos about this new camera announcement. However, I wanted to give my two cents about it. I remember when it was announced, uh, whether it was February 13th or 14th, everybody was freaking out because it's so cheap for a full frame mirrorless camera. Now, of course, everybody is right about that. The camera is 1300 bucks, which has never been done before for a mirrorless full frame camera. However, I think after the initial announcement and everybody kind of looked at the spec sheet and some people used it at the Canon event in New Orleans, um, some people hated it and some people are loving it and there seems to be no in between. Now, of course, I was not invited to said event that Canon put on, but you know, maybe in the future, but just from the spec sheet and everything, I just wanna give my opinion I really like this announcement or this release for this camera. So real quick to some of the people who are like, what is this camera? What is it about? Let's go over the specs real quick, the good and then the bad. Okay, so this is the good. So it's 1300 bucks, like I've said, cheapest full frame mirrorless camera ever released. There has been no full frame mirrorless camera at that price point, not even close. The Sony a7 III, which broke a lot of price barriers last year, starts at $2,000. This camera is $700 cheaper than that. So just kind of let that sink in for a second. Canon doesn't always release the cheapest stuff. However, with this, the RP, they are really undercutting everybody else and they're forcing other manufacturers like Sony, Nikon, uh, Fuji to make, or Fuji doesn't make full frame, but Panasonic to make a budget or an entry level full frame mirrorless camera like this in that price range. So that's very good for us consumers. Okay, so enough about the price. Second is that it's full frame. Uh, third is that it's 26 megapixels, so typically APS-C are around 24. This has a little bit more. It has a flippy screen, which is very valuable to vloggers and cinematographers and even photographers. Everybody loves the flippy screen. Hey, Sony, if you're listening, it's like a door hinge. It, it does this. I, I don't know why every camera doesn't have it, but the EOS RP does have it. It also has the Digic 8 processor, which the Canon M50, which I am using right now, has that processor and it definitely kind of unleashes the power of mirrorless cameras. Something else that not a lot of people are talking about, but I have on my pro list for this camera is the CR3 RAW format. It is a lot smaller than the normal RAW file size, but it still has the same quality. I think that's a great innovation that Canon is producing and the EOS RP has that file format. The next best thing about the EOS RP is that it is native to the RF lens mount. So the RF lenses and the lens mount is the full frame lens mount for Canon mirrorless cameras. And this budget camera can have the best of the best mirrorless glass that Canon offers that you can put on it. Yes, they're very expensive, 
However, that's kind of future proofing your budget camera purchase. So it's kind of good and bad. The next thing is very time sensitive, which sucks a little bit, but I've got to mention it is the pre-order deal right now, which I think Adorama is the, the main kind of leader in this. They give you the grip, which adds a little kind of depth to holding the camera in three different colors, black, blue, and red, which I think is really cool, kind of sets Canon apart from the other manufacturers. And also they're including the lens adapter for EF lenses. So yes, RF lenses are native to the RP and the Canon R, but they're giving you an adapter in the pre-order for free. And I think that is a huge deal. However, that only runs to March 30th. My feelings kind of change after that date because the grip, which is not a battery grip, it's just a size extension and a style extension, so to speak, with the different colors, is not gonna be free all of the time in this camera. So if you kind of jump on board now, as of you know this month and a half time frame here, you're gonna get a lot more bang for your buck with the Canon RP. Something else that really doesn't matter as far as image quality is I really like the look of the new Canon cameras. I have the M50, I love the aesthetics of the M50, I love the aesthetics of the R, and I like the RP even more. It's definitely subjective, but something I have on my pro list because I like the look of it. What can I say? And last but not least, which I think a lot of people are overlooking, especially people who have made videos about this, is how light this camera is. Back to the DP review comparison thing, I have you know the 60 Mark II, A7 III, EOS all, are all compared. The RP is 1.07 pounds, and then the next closest to it is the A7 III at 1.43 pounds. For me personally, that's a big deal. I use APS-C format cameras because they're so light, I take them everywhere with me, it gets me shooting more photos, more video, and just makes my creativity a lot more accessible when I have a tool that is so much lighter. I feel like that is a big deal for a full frame camera. To have the lightest, cheapest camera it's really kind of making a statement that Canon is doing and I I'm all for it. Okay, so we've gone over the good, we've buttered it up a little bit. Let's talk about the bad. Okay, so number one I have on my list is cropped 4K, which I feel like so many cameras are saying they have 4K, we do 4K, we do full 4K, and then it's cropped like a mother. Now I can fully understand this. This is just something that a lot of cameras have like the M50 for example, but I, I get it. A lot of people want full frame 4K from a full frame camera and this does not offer that. The next thing is something that they do in a lot of their cameras like the M50 is the 4K does not have dual pixel autofocus. So it has contrast autofocus and it's just terrible. It's, it's terrible. So uh, the 4K is cropped. The autofocus is terrible, so it's mainly for like sit down type stuff. So, I mean, not everybody is using 4K, but still that's crippling your video features. Then to take it even further with the video features cripple, it's just, this one blows my mind, is that it doesn't have 24 frames per second in 1080p. There's no 24 frames per second. There's 25 frames per second, but the cinematic quote unquote standard is 24 frames per second to get that cinematic kind of look. For some reason, the Canon M50, which is a $650, sometimes cheaper camera, has that format. But for some reason, a $1,300 full frame camera does not have that, which is very odd. But in my opinion, it's something that isn't a deal breaker, but for some people, they're like carrying pitchforks and like, Canon, you suck, no 24 frames per second. But do people really notice? Do they like really, really notice? Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to have it in a cheaper camera that you offer and then not in a more expensive. Next is there is no slow-mo on this camera which is really mind blowing to me because cameras like the 6300, 6400, 6500 from Sony offer that. And then also the Canon M50, which we're filming on right now offers it, but in 720p. I don't know why they couldn't have just 
kept the same slow-mo, which is 720p, which people already complained about, and threw that in there, they were just like, nah, we'll just ditch slow-mo altogether. The next thing is that it has a small battery. It has the same battery that the M50 has, and in the little bit that I've been using the M50, I've, I love the camera, I really do, but the battery life is noticeably not that great. So I can't imagine how it does in the RP, but smaller camera means a smaller, less life of a battery. Is that how you say that? So a smaller camera is going to mean a smaller battery. So you kind of, you get what you get. And then lastly in my cons list, which I think is a pretty big deal, even more so than the 24P, is that this camera really can't keep up with any kind of movement. On paper, it says five frames per second in continuous autofocus, which is absolutely terrible. The Canon M50 does better than that. And my Sony a6000 over here that was released in 2014 doubles that. The RP is just flat out, in my opinion, not a sports camera. If you wanna get a camera to photograph your kids playing soccer or basketball, or whatever, do not get the RP. Um, it is definitely not suited for sports. Now that's not to say you couldn't manage it, but you're not gonna be snapping every kind of frame of the action. I'm sure in everyday use it's okay, but for like specific, oh, I need a camera to capture sports. No, not the one for you. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Okay, so we've talked about, at least in my opinion, some of the pros, some of the cons. Now let's just talk about it. So this isn't my opinion. Canon has straight out come and said, this is an entry level camera for mirrorless. For $1,300, I think they nailed an entry level camera. I don't agree with leaving Canon M50 features out of a more expensive camera. I don't, I just, I don't agree with that. As far as like a photography and a little bit video perspective, this is an amazing camera for the price. I think the pre-order with the grip and the adapter is a complete steal. I feel like my attitude changes once that pre-order um, cost saving period ends. Um, I wonder how I'll feel about the camera in general after that. Of course, I wanna use it too, because it's one thing to look at a spec sheet and be like, oh, this thing is so limited, and then it's another thing to actually use it. From what I've seen, you know, Jared Poland from Frono's Photo and other, you know, I've seen videos on YouTube where they've actually used the camera, they really like it. And I feel like the main point to drive home is how small it is. When I hold the M50, I am in love with how small it is and the, the punch that it packs. And I feel like that's something a lot of people overlook. That's why the Sony A6000 is so popular. It gives you such high quality and such a small form factor and for a cheap price. And I feel like that's what the RP is geared towards. It's geared towards small, but great quality photos, maybe great quality video. We, I mean, I have to use it, I have to see it. And that's the point. That is the point, to be a first camera for somebody out there who maybe wants to do portraits and get paid for them or, or maybe wants to really have high quality photos for their family and all of their personal travel and stuff like that. The RP is perfect for all of those things. So then there are channels like uh, DSLR Video Shooter and Matty Hapoya and others that really trash this camera because of the video features. And I hear them, I do, I hear them but I also don't hear them or I don't agree with them. They, um, they voiced their concern or <laughs> their dislike about this camera, but neither of them have used said camera. Now, of course, when you look at a spec sheet and you're like, no 24 frames per second, like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's, it's stupid. I don't know why Canon chooses to cripple stuff, but having said that, that it doesn't have that and the 4K is, basically made for sit down video, if that. I understand there are limitations with that stuff. However, guess what camera Casey Neistat, the vlog master, the vlog guru, guess what camera he uses? I'll wait. Hmm. 
I love this beer. If you don't know, Casey is using the 60 Mark II from Canon, which everybody shit on when it came out. Canon has this knack for releasing cameras that may not be the prettiest on paper, but when you actually get them, hold them in your hand and use them, you're like, wow, this is pretty awesome. So my point to the channels like Maddie and DSLR Video Shooter is that, yeah, you guys are cinematographers, you're video guys, you do know what you're talking about, but also, Casey Neistat's using this camera that everybody shit all over because it didn't have this and it didn't have that. However, he's using it for millions, millions of viewers out there and he is creating cinematic gold. Now, of course, you know, Casey's kind of known for not the technical shots, not like the crispiest shots, but he is great at storytelling and my point is that you don't need 24 frames per second. You don't need dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Do you want that? Yes, but Canon specifically said that this is a entry level, this is a beginner camera to full frame. We're gonna give you guys a camera that you can afford if you're looking to kind of step up from the APS-C world or a DSLR world and you want an electronic viewfinder, you want all of these different things, RF lenses, compatibility, all of that for such a cheap price, this is what we can give you. And I feel like it's such a valuable starting point. I mean, again, I need to calm my hype train a little bit. I haven't used the camera, so maybe I need to eat my own words. However, I feel like other people are so quick to just trash the camera because of a frames per second and because of 4K stuff. Like, I don't watch YouTube videos in 4K. Do you guys watch YouTube videos in 4K? Okay, maybe I watch MK BHD videos in 4K, but my monitor is not 4K. I just select that option because I know he's using a red camera, but how many other people do that? If you use a Canon RP and everybody shits on YouTube, does that make you a bad filmmaker or photographer? No. It's about you being happy with your work and a camera that works for you. And I just think that Canon has changed the game a little bit. They've changed the price points and that is awesome for me, for you, for anybody looking to get a camera or looking to go full frame, especially in the mirrorless world, moving forward in the year 2019. I really hope that putting a 1300 price tag on this full frame mirrorless camera with a flippy screen and all that good stuff, I hope that cues in Sony and says, this is what people want. Um, it's not just vloggers, it's, it's everybody. They want a fully articulating screen. I have it on the M50 right here and I love it. And it's touch screen and uh, it's just awesome. Also the AF drag point, Oh, so sweet. You don't even need a joystick. I know some people prefer it, but I love the digital one. But anyway, yeah, those are my thoughts. I think I'm gonna end here, play some video games here. It's really late at night, but I wanted to record this video for you guys. I wanna do more camera news videos, maybe make a different format. I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but Ted Nanders is a killer news anchor. I will link that up in the top left here or top right. That's where it is, top right to uh, show you guys my last video. Let me know if you liked this discussion about the Canon RP. Let me know if you think it's trash, if you like it, if you think Canon cripples their stuff. We all know they do, but do they still make good cameras? All of that good stuff, comment down below. You know I look at the comments and talk to you guys. So yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know. I will see you guys in the next episode later.